Welcome, this is the uh, Tennessee uh, End of Course for Algebra 2 practice test, question number 60. A researcher used a linear regression of the data in this table to determine the relationship between a city's distance from the equator and its average maximum temperature, which best describes the linear correlation between a city's distance from the equator and its average maximum temperature in January. Now, the question says strong negative correlation, strong positive, weak negative, and weak positive. The idea of a positive versus negative correlation, a positive correlation is when you have an increase in your first set of data, so your independent uh, variable, your dependent variable should increase as well. So it should go up, kind of like age and height in most situations. They're uh, positively correlated. Negative correlation means when one goes up, the other one goes down, uh, which is what kind of what we should be dealing with here if you think about it. So we've got the Earth, very badly drawn, and an equator. They want to know the distance from the equator. As you go up, the temperature, so this distance increases, our temperature should, on average, go down, assuming we're outside. Um, so in this case, since one goes up and the other goes down, this is a negative correlation, most likely. So we're going to mark out the positive correlations on the idea that it probably is a negative correlation. The other thing we need to think about is weak versus strong. Weak correlation means that the data is sort of related, but not really. If you do a line of best fit, weak correlated data will be in the general direction of the line of best fit, but not very closely uh, tied to it. A strong correlation is the opposite, of course, where the data looks almost exactly like the um, uh, line of best fit and because the data is strongly connected together. A correlation would be how closely related two sets of data are or any relationship to a data because it could be no correlation as well. So let's look at what this looks like on a graph. I already put mine in my list and I did my edit. So I could actually go up and hit second plot, turn on the plot, and then you can actually look at the data. Now, if you did this graph, you probably won't get it to look like this. Not because I'm some genius. I've just fiddled with the window a little bit. Uh, let me show you what I mean. My, This is my x or my independent variable. My dependent variable or my y I put over here. I changed the window to meet it. I started at 0 and went up to about 5,000. That seems reasonable. And uh, here I went to negative 10 and up to 30. Also a reasonable range to do your graph. If you have the negative 10, 10, which is common, uh, it probably won't look like this. But as you can see, if, when I go back to the graph here, it's pretty negative. I mean, it, it shows the negative correlation that I suspected before. Uh, that's the worst line of best fit ever. That's not the line of best fit. That's the line of better fit than nothing, I guess. So probably somewhere like right around in here. It's the line of best fit. And as you can see, the points are pretty close to that line. So I'm going to say that it's probably a strong correlation, but I can test it even further by looking at something called the correlation coefficient. Now, if it had been up here and up here and kind of in this general vicinity, that probably would be more of a weak negative correlation. But let's look at the correlation coefficient to give us a better idea of that overall value. Now the correlation coefficient, of course, is the is, it's an R value. It's the value that tells us how closely uh, connected the data is or how close the fit they make to that line of best fit. So the first thing you might have to do is turn your diagnostics on. If you go in and do a linear regression, which is what you have to do here, and you don't get an R value, you need to turn, it's because your diagnostics are turned off on your calculator. So for T84+, plus, for instance, go into second catalog and it should get you to the catalog here. Hit the matrix button because it has the D next to it because it'll take you down to the D's because shockingly diagnostic starts with a D. So you're going to click down to the one that says diagnostic on, hit enter, and then hit enter again. Now the diagnostic is turned on. So if you do this next part and you don't see the R, go back and follow that set and you should be fine. Now we're going to go into the stat menu and I'm going to do a calculation. What I'm going to do is a linear regression because that's what they said the researcher did. Hit enter there hit it again and as you can see I get all this data about the uh, all this information about the two sets of data so what I'm really looking at is this R value the R value is the correlation coefficient not only does it prove my idea or at least support my idea I guess that it is a negative correlation because you can see it's negative 0.94 so marking the positive things out did make a lot of sense and logically it makes sense it also gives me a 0.949 correlation that's about 95 percent correlated so I can say a 
especially considering how arbitrary the data is, that this is a strong negative correlation. Uh, that kind of error may not be acceptable for certain medical tests or whatever, but 95% is pretty strong. If it was in the 80s, maybe I would feel a little bit less uh, confident that it was strong. If it's in the 70s, it's definitely a weak correlation. If it's in the 50s, there's no correlation at all, or 0 0.5, that kind of thing. So that's pretty much it. If you want to assess whether something is what kind of correlation you have, go in, type in the data, do a uh, linear regression, and just see what your correlation coefficient is. It should give you the best story of all of your data combined. So good luck.